When watching this video, please note the following disclaimers. At this point we have discussed the basics of JobKeeper. Now we'd like to show you how you can use Deputy and Zero to pay your staff the JobKeeper allowance. For this example, we'll be using the basic Higa award and we'll be scheduling in a fortnightly pattern and ensuring that some of our team have exceeded $1,500 and some have not. We will then assume that all timesheets have been approved, ready to be exported. When we're ready to export, the process is very simple. You click on export and then select zero payroll and click export. During this JobKeeper period, your processes in Deputy should not change. However, when landing in Zero, this is where we will need to make some changes. Assuming that you are processing your timesheets in Zero as per normal, at this point there is nothing yet to set up for JobKeeper. As per the normal process of paying your staff, after you have approved your timesheets, you will head to create a new pay run. Zero has done a great job preparing for JobKeeper. So when you go to pay your employees by running a new pay run, you'll see that there is a new JobKeeper payment tools widget available. This describes seven steps that enable you to be ready for JobKeeper payments. The first step that we're going to talk about is enrolling your employees for the JobKeeper payment. This process is very simple. Zero will detail who is potentially eligible. If there are any warnings around eligibility, Zero will detail them in the warnings above. And all you need to do is click on Start JobKeeper and select the first fortnight of which this employee should receive a JobKeeper payment. Simply then repeat those steps for all eligible employees. This process ensures the right JobKeeper codes are going to be sent to the ATO. Now that your employees are enrolled, we then need to ensure that the pay item set up in Xero's payroll settings are correct. Zero has introduced a new pay item into your pay items. It will automatically be available. You may need to scroll down to find this item at the bottom of your list. This new pay item is called JobKeeper Payment Topper. When editing the allowance, you will see that there is a new type. This allowance will be automatically reported to the ATO. This new JobKeeper allowance is exempt from superannuation. If you have preemptively created a new pay item for the JobKeeper top-up allowance, you now need to go back into that allowance and edit the type to be the JobKeeper type so that it will successfully sync to the ATO. At this point, we have enrolled our employees, checked that our pay item is set up correctly. So now we are ready to run our pay run. So selecting the pay period, which is the fortnight that aligns to JobKeeper, I can now see that some of my employees' earnings are less than $1,500 and some are more. If I click to edit Oliver Gray, who has less than $1,500 earnings, I can then click to add an earnings line and go into the earnings rate drop down list and find the JobKeeper payment top up allowance. At this point, I'll use a calculator to get $1,500 and minus that from the current gross payment to figure out the remaining top up amount. The total gross amount should equal $1,500. If your employee has already earned more than $1,500, you do not need to add any top-up amount. This process of adding the JobKeeper allowance should be done to any eligible employee that has not yet earned $1,500 in the fortnight period. Once you have applied all the top-ups that you need to for your staff, that you are now ready to post your pay run, and after you post your pay run, file it through Single Touch Payroll to ensure that your employees will have the appropriate codes associated to them so they will trigger the JobKeeper allowance codes automatically.